For years, you guys have been asking me to review Springbank, and today I'm finally gonna do it as I talk about the Springbank 10. Let's get into it. Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary where I do the research to try to teach you a little something about what you're drinking. Today we're going to be talking about Springbank. Now this is a whiskey I have been wanting to review for five and a half years basically. People have been asking me to do this one since I did my episode on Macallan, like third episode in, something like that. So this is definitely long time coming. Now there's some reasons I didn't pick this up and I'll go over some of those in the overview, but for the most part let's just talk about Springbank. So it's been around since 1828, the distillery, and it's been family owned since that time, the Mitchell family. So multiple generations over about 200 years. And during that time frame, they were closed for very, very little. When you look into the history of almost every Scottish distillery, there's always gonna be points where they are closed. And in this case, very, very little of that time they were. Now Campbelltown used to have about 30 distilleries, and now it's down to three. There's Springbank, then there's Glen Scotia, and there's Glen Gyle. And that's it. And that alone makes this kind of worth noting. But there's also another thing that makes it unique, and in this case actually unique, because it's the only distillery in Scotland that malts, it distills, it ferments, it matures, and it bottles all on the same location. Which is kind of saying something, considering, you know, Campbelltown's not huge, and all three of these distilleries are fairly close together. So you're doing everything in this you know, one little area. So kind of a kind of a neat thing. Now they do import their um, their peat from Isla, which you know I'm sold. <laughs> I just I love a peated whiskey. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about how this is made. So it goes through the normal process of the grain getting gristed and then fermenting, moves on to distillation in one of three copper pot stills, and one of them is heated by fire, the first one, and then the other two are heated by steam. Now this. Springbank does something called two and a half times or two and a half distillations. Now I had to look this up myself because it's not a term that I had ever heard, but essentially what you're doing is you're removing some of the low wines during the distillation process and reintroducing them later on. And this allows some of those heavier components to kind of stick around. It gives this certain flavors that we'll, we'll talk about in a moment. So uh, lastly, they kind of go through worm tubs for condensing, and then they finish or mature them in X bourbon and X sherry casks. Now, Springbank, um, one of the cool things about it is similar to, say, Brooklady, it's multifaceted. They produce three different offerings. The Hazelburn Single Malt, which is the newest variety, although it's still been around since 1997. It's triple distilled, non-peated whiskey, and it's named for a mothball distillery. The Springbank, obviously, what we're talking about here, it's self-titled. It's got a standard bottling of 10-year-old. It's got medium peat, and it's distilled two and a half times, as I mentioned. The core range includes 12-year-old cast strength, 15-year, 18-year, 21-year, and obviously the 10. There's also a variety of cask-matured editions that come out pretty much every year. There's, lastly, the Long Row Single Malt, which is highly peated, double distilled, and named for a distillery that's long since closed. So I'm sure at some point or another, I'll cover all of these different variations. But for right now, let's get into this whiskey. The Springbank 10 spends 60% of its time aging in X bourbon barrels and 40% spent in X sherry barrels. It's non-chill filtered, no coloring added, and bottled at 46%. Let's go ahead and get into the nose and the taste here. So. So that's interesting. Now. One thing I will tell you, and I, I once again, I was going to get to this in the overview, but I think this is reasonable. When I first opened this bottle, this is one that has to breathe. You're going to want to go through at least a third of this bottle and then just let it sit. Because um, the nose here needs to open up. It needs to be exposed to new oxygen. It needs to just chill out for a while in the bottle. But when you're nosing this eventually, you're going to get a lot of sherry and bourbon notes rather than the peated notes. So for example, you're gonna get peach, you're gonna get lemon. You'll get some sea salt here, and I'm, I'm gonna attribute that a bit to kind of being on the shore, um, maybe some influence from the peat there. Now keep in mind, it is medium peated. It's not gonna blow your mind uh, with smoke, but it is absolutely gonna get some influence from that. 
The malt comes across pretty heavy here, and if you kind of dig enough, and this these are actually more notes, I'm not actually getting this as I'm smelling this here, you gotta really focus on this to get some of the bourbon notes. You're gonna get vanilla, and you're gonna get butterscotch. Now, that's really, I mean, that's a lot, but that's a lot, that's about it. Um, maybe some just general citrusy notes. All right, let's go ahead and have a taste. Cheers. Mm. Now this is a unique flavor. <laughs> Those of you that have had Springbank before might be smiling to yourselves, because you know, Springbank has a unique flavor, for sure. It's not like a peated whiskey that you might drink somewhere else. It's not going to be a challenging peat. It's got what people refer to as Springbank funk. Um, it's the best way to put it is honestly the best way to put it is just to, just to try it. And that's going to be a new flavor profile for you to identify in other whiskeys. So let's just start off. There's some influence from the peat. It's a mild smoke. It's not overbearing, um, but it is there. And it's not ashy, it's just, it's almost like a nice mouthful of cigar smoke. And then, now I did say it's not ashy, I kind of think of ashy as a little bit different than that. This is full bodied, filling your mouth up with that cigar smoke, and then going. But there's, I don't want to say there's a tobacco taste in here, because I don't think there is, but something about a cigar reminds me of the funk that I'm trying to identify here. But moving past that, there's oiliness to this whiskey. Um, you're getting that, presumably, from that two and a half times distilled bit, reintroducing the lowland whiskey, ah, uh, the, jeez, lowland, sorry, the low wines into there. Um, <laughs> sorry, all right. So some of the other tastes you're getting in here are salt, um, that one's coming across a lot more apparent in the taste than it did in the nose. I obviously mentioned it in the nose, but it's more in the taste here. Um, there's also some honey and maybe even a little bit of chocolate kind of going on there. So let's talk overall, because that's what I'm here for. Who's this whiskey for? Adventurous. I think adventurous is a good way to put this. Somebody looking for something unique. Somebody looking for something different. Somebody who is maybe a little tired of something like an Ardbeg or like a Laphroaig and instead saying, what other kind of peat tastes are there? Well, this is one of them. Um, you know, maybe you don't want a Speyside because you're done with fruit, but you like fruity uh, whiskeys, so maybe you want to combine the two. This is a good way to combine them. I will say that funk is not for everybody. It was honestly not for me. Um, for quite a while. I had to let this open up. That was part of also the reason I haven't reviewed this. I bought this bottle probably six months ago, and I keep going back to it, and I keep going back to it, and I finally started liking it. The, the um, what do you call it? The initiation into liking Springbank for me, personally, was very similar to the initiation of liking peated whiskeys. It was not what I liked at first, and then I had to keep trying it, and eventually I liked it. Think of coffee, you know? Nobody likes coffee the first time they try it, unless maybe you try it as an adult or something, but if you're like an eight-year-old kid trying your parents' cup of coffee, that's gonna be your reaction potentially to this whiskey at first, but as you get a little bit more mature, as you get a little bit more into it, coffee is lifeblood, and Pete is lifeblood. I like this whiskey a lot. I'm looking forward to trying some of the higher age statement whiskeys, I will not say that this is one of my favorites, but the 10 is still low in the age statement. I'm looking forward to seeing what some of the higher age statement whiskeys in Springbank line do, uh, is, you know, really presenting. I also kind of really want to try the long row. Um, I don't really know if I'm going to like that. I probably will because more peat is better. But overall, Springbank 10, $80. That's a tough sell for me. Um, I think it's a fun one to try, and I haven't tried the higher higher age statements to the point where I could say, hey, just go pick up the 18, even if it's a lot more expensive. I have been given that advice myself um, from other people, so I could pass that along to you. But I would find it very hard to recommend purchasing this whiskey for 
knowing that there's a chance you might really not like it. Um, so try it. Buy it at a buy it at a bar. Give it a shot. You might not like it though, and you might have to try a couple. Maybe have something else first, so you can kind of dull your senses a little bit, and then try the spring bank. That's about it. I think I think that's going to be my evaluation here. It's a try it. So um, yeah. That does it. So thank you guys very much for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary. Make sure you check out the links in the description below. Check out the Patreon, subscribe, like, all those fun things. And what the heck, go join the Discord. The Discord's awesome. Lots of us talk in there pretty much every day about all things whiskey. So, all right, thank you for joining me here and have a great rest of your night. Cheers. <laughs>